Are you serious? Yeah. Two meals in one, brother. Entree and main. How do I not have a girlfriend? Got one now. Can do what I want. That's fucking ridiculous. You're a so, dickhead. Have you pulled off this stunt in front of Rach? Not yet, but I'm thinking maybe. Every evening in Australia... Love this show. So good! That's going to be good, yeah. More than four million of us choose to spend the night in front of the telly. It genuinely brings everyone together. This is the one. Shush! But have you ever wondered what other people are watching? No, I freaking flop. <laughs> I hate to sing. Whoa. Find out what people thought about what was on in the last seven days. This, to me, is a good night. <laughs> it's so bad. We want more. This week... Yeah! Blockbuster reality renovation show, The Block. The Block. The Block, The Block, The Block. You're on. Really? Made a welcome return to our screens. Ooh. We checked out Channel 7's latest offering. Oh. Soft. Ooh. What's that? I have no idea. And we were saddened by the harsh realities of life in Syria. Imagine growing up with gunfire and bombings. So I've noted that you've noted that I leave crumbs around a lot. Yeah, I was about to say that actually. <laughs> it's you so and we have a crumbs. crumb issue. That... We have a crumb issue. I mean, I'm doing I'm doing better. Like when I see one, I'll just go like that and just kind of put it on the but, floor. But you know, crumbs. <laughs> I have noticed you doing that actually, and I just think. Or like if there's a bit of if that there's a one. bit of tissue, I'll just tuck it underneath. <laughs> look, look, wait, wait, wait. I have wait. noticed that you I do that. I think I left a bit of tissue here. That was you. I thought that was my. See, look, auntie. there's a bit of tissue. <laughs> that was you. <laughs> well, where am I supposed to put it? I don't in the fucking bin. On Monday night, Channel 7 unveiled its new reality show, Australia's Cheapest Weddings. I want to get some ideas for us when we're allowed. Aussies spend an average of $65,000 on their wedding day. Oh, what? Really? We're not spending $65,000. That's a house deposit. We haven't Kylie Minogue. She's going to cost more than 60 grand. In this episode, we watch Crystal and Dan plan their special day on a budget of $4,000. Whoa! Oh, that's hard. How much was yours? Two grand? No. Pretty close. Two... Probably about five. Yeah, that's what we had for about, around about four, five, but that was 30, 30 years ago and that was probably... 31. $168 I had my wedding dress. Bye. you. She's doing quite a good job at this. Take notes, girls. And Dan's also scored himself a snazzy online outfit for just $140. Oh, hello. So, what do you think? No, definitely not. Oh, and the oh. shoes. Oh, so God. What the hell? You never trust a man that wears white shoes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'd like a Prada suit. We're not having a Prada suit. Oh, you're not having a Prada suit. <laughs> you can get yours from Lowe's. It's all about me. For the reception, Crystal has sourced a venue for four hundred dollars. Oh, bowls club! Bowls club! Shit chair. Yeah. What if only is as limited as your imagination? Oh, well, you would need quite an imagination to get that sorted. I don't mind that. I think it's nice if you dress it up. They're trying to pull off a formal black and white look. Maybe they uh, bearing for Collywood. Yeah, maybe. But they've been left to do it all on their own. Where are their friends? Have they got no friends? Yeah, where's the fan? Give yeah. me a hand. My best man sent me a text message saying he couldn't do it. What the heck? That's so sad. What can't he do? He just has to turn up. What a jerk. What was his reason? Just can't be there. With only two hours until the club has to close up for the night, Manager Sue is on their case. Time is really ticking on that sort Why don't you help then? Shut up and help them or fuck off. It's not like she's got a hot date or anything. She might have a date. She's picked up one of the old pensioners at Bowls. Yep. The DJ calls and adds some more trouble into the mix. Oh, more bad news. Our DJ has just pulled out. Oh, my oh. gosh. Well, you did wonder how he was going to get here on a bike with his equipment. <laughs> he was going to bring up the decks with his BMX. I actually felt really sad for him. But now her mother has called. With some bad news, she won't be coming to the wedding tomorrow. Oh. No! What? That is plain sad. She does that to their daughter. Would you ever not come to my wedding? No, never. Even if I said to you, don't turn up, you can't come to my I wedding? Come. You still come? Yes. If I lock the doors, what would you do? I break the door. <laughs> I've known it's a possibility for a while that she... Wait, why, though? 
What's the reason? There's a backstory here. I want to know why. Same. The show should be saying to us why the mother's not coming. I'm but I'm determined that tomorrow is going to be a good day. Just get married, love. Don't worry about anyone. And when you win Tat Slotter, tell them to stick it up their ass. Despite setbacks, the wedding goes ahead. At least the doves were alive. I half expected them to be dead. Now it's time to go to the Bowls Club to celebrate. Oh, that looks gorgeous. Oh, it's beautiful. It actually looks good for a budget. It is. I agree. Yeah, it does. The couple get ready to make their big entrance. But what's she going to do when she finds out the caterer hasn't turned up? Oh. <laughs> no! Oh. Now how could the caterers not turn up? It must be staged. Channel 7 could have easily rung the caterers and said, uh, don't it's on come. The, it's on the Sunday, not the Saturday. Party pies all around. <laughs> <laughs> Crystal and Dan expected 60 people to attend their reception, but only a fraction have turned up. That is really sad. This is my fear of having parties and no one shows up because no one likes you. It's even a slow clap, it's like... I'm here for the feed. <laughs> oh, wait, there's no feed, I've got to go. <laughs> is anybody else from the bridal table going to sit at the table? Yeah. Or... Oh. Gonna... What the hell is going on with this wedding? I don't get it. I would find new friends. That's just Paul. <laughs> the bride's gonna sink a few. <laughs> That's a way. Drink it away. You are gonna need more than a double black, my dear. Finally, the food arrives. Oh, thank God for that. It's good. I love it. You get your choice. You get to say what you want, more or less. She smashed. <laughs> you can have two potatoes. You can have three. You can have jackets. You can keep the jackets on and you can keep the jackets off. It's so funny how they're not telling us why everything's happened. The best man's not coming because he slept with her. I reckon the mother hates him. So why is the best man not come? <clears throat> he hates, hates her. And the DJ's not coming because he slept with the mum. <laughs> the caterer doesn't turn up, then just magically appears. <laughs> why? Why don't we ring up the bowls club? <laughs> she talk Sue like a dish or the goss. Big time. Australia's cheapest wedding. happily ever after. With Bundys and Cokes. I feel uncomfortable. I don't like that. No, I want more. I love this show. Darling, you're going to have to get your legs off me because my legs are going to sleep as a result. <laughs> and I feel, in this skirt, I feel like I'm wrapped in a condom, so I have to... It actually looks like a condom now that you tell me. <laughs> Does it? When did you last see a black leather condom? <laughs> I'm mostly known as a comedian. On Wednesday night, Arne Doe showed us some of his multiple talents on a new talk show. Welcome to Arne's Brush With Fame. Arne, what's his name? Arne. In this series, I'll be combining my passion for getting to know interesting people with my love of painting. Wow, is he a pa I never knew he was a painter. Neither did I. But he's a man of many talents. Super genuine, super talented. Great multitasker. He's a lawyer, qualified lawyer. Yeah, I know. God, and here I am just scratching me ass and bumping into, bumping things. into things. It's like Rolf Harris gone Asian. Uh, except he's not going to probably touch up his guests like Rolf Harris did. Magda Zhabansky is one of Australia's most loved and celebrated performers. Oh, it's Magda! She's a funny character. She is. She's been making us laugh for years. What's your favourite one of Magda? Kath and Kim. Oh, I'm Sharon Strizlicky. Hi, nice to meet you too. Nipballer, wasn't she? Yeah, and she's always patches always or breaks cuts or cuts and cuts and everything, yeah. <laughs> She's like you. You laugh, you talk. Like her. I know I'm funny like her, aren't I? She's overweight, I'm a bit overweight. Arne works on Magda's portrait while finding out what makes her tick. You mentioned uh, you used to love watching The Brady Bunch. I did, and then I realised that the, the fascination I had with Marsha Brady was different from the way the other girls at school felt about <laughs> Marsha Brady. <laughs> you want to she was my one. first crush. She I like Greg as well, yeah. <laughs> A big part of it was me realising that I was gay, which, yes. you know, in 1974, it was terrifying. It, was, it, it was, really was. Then it was diagnosed as a mental illness. It was illegal, oh. and it was conflated with paedophilia. So it was the you most. You tried to cure them, was, like an illness. Like oh, I think I'm gay. No, your head's you, not right. Felt, I just felt nothing but disgust and shame for myself. We're all b so born a certain that. way. I'm born as a sex crazed man eater. <laughs> She's born as a sex crazed woman eater. 
What's the difference? Tell me back to when you came out to your parents. Oh, that was amazing. I think they knew I was gay. My dad called me a poof my whole life, so isn't that... <laughs> and, and they were beautiful. We failed as parents. Why? We had three children and they're all straight. Well, it's always the grandkids. If you could go back and give your 10-year-old self some advice, Magda, what would you say to her? I would say, don't fret, it's all going to work out all right. And I would say, you know, there will come a time when gay people will be allowed to be married. Mm. Not in this country, but... Don't, 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 don't just make you cry. emotional now. Change the subject. That would have changed my life, knowing that. Would have changed my life. Oh, Magda, I want to give you a cuddle. And in a country like this, where it would cost us nothing, that we still don't have marriage equality. You know, I know. The it costs that nothing. Joke. Don't they realise how much money mm. I'd spend at a wedding? I mean, New Zealand's passed that through. Why can't we pass it through as well? Well, you just like look at Magda and you're like, you're not legally allowed to be married. Oh, hurry up and make it legal. You know, the signal that that would send to those young people of, of hope and acceptance, you know? It would make life so much easier for kids was, to know. Uh, to know that you're accepted. You know? Yeah. You're making me cry. You're making me cry, Maggie. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I'm turned into such a crier in my middle age. Tell me about it. <laughs> God. I used to never cry, and now I just cry all, all the, the time. time. <laughs> this is probably a little bit too soppy, but you're like, you're my hero. Oh, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's oh. so sweet. It'll make you look like a hero, you know? I hope you like it. Normally, I would be quite cynical towards the amount of love that's being thrown around, but not at all on this yeah. show. Then, the moment we've all been waiting for. I'm nervous. Oh, I don't kinda, be. I'm yeah. excited. I'm it's, nervous it's too. Just show us quick. <laughs> but it's, can you close your eyes? Yes. Are you closing your eyes? Keep them closed. Keep them closed. Three, two, two one. one. Go. Oh, my God. Show us. Can we see? That is amazing. Hello. That's incredible. Oh, my God. I love it. Oh. I just wanted that, you know... It's perfect. Joyful. It's fabulous. You know, a reflection of Magda's... Vibrant personality, oh. yes. That's lovely. That's actually good. That's good, yeah. I love the way it just lays it on, and it's so rough, but it's... Oh, it's a very individual style. Oh, I think I would have liked it a bit better than that. That is amazing. That's a get it the... feels like me. It feels like me. But she's not smiling. She should be smiling in it. She is smiling. She That's is. smiling. But it's also hurt. Yeah. <laughs> oh, how deep is that? <laughs> Thanks for coming on the show, mate. Oh, pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. This is such a good show. Can we watch this again? Yeah. I'm so impressed with Aunt. I just love him now more. I want him to do me. Yeah, me too. That was fun. I love my job. Just say you're going to have your portrait painted. Wonder who you would choose to actually paint your portrait? Well, you've given that a bit of thought, have you? What about Matisse or Picasso? No, I can't think of anybody. Caravaggio or someone like that? No. Rembrandt. Oh, don't be mad. Nuts. <laughs>
Abba? Abba? Who's Abba? Isn't Abba a guy? Now in its 12th season, the block sees five teams each renovating their own apartment in the same building. This is at the soap factory in Port Melbourne. An abandoned soap factory in Port Melbourne. There you go. Where is that? Port Melbourne. Thanks, mate. This week, everyone's yeah, renovating a bathroom and much of the drama centred on older contestant Dan. Renovation veteran Dan is feeling confident about the progress in his room. We seem to be on track. We're on track. When someone says they're on track, something goes Murphy's wrong. Murphy's Law, something goes yeah. wrong. Oh, no. Something's oh, cropped up here. Ooh. We've got a problem here, buddy. There's graffiti all over your wall. As with all contestants, Dan must have his room approved by Keith, the foreman. See that? It's not even mixed. This is a sandpit. Mm. When you put a screed down, you get your sand, your cement, and you get all your chemicals. This whole screed's going to be removed. What the hell is screed? That screed has been mixed with a shovel. Stop saying screed. I don't like it. We can't warranty that screed. If this was an episode of Sesame Street, that'd be the word of the day. It's just a wet screed. You just don't go in and kick a wet screed. Let's learn a new word today. OK. Thanks to the block. Screed is a long speech. No. It's like a concrete floor. Ah. Oh. That makes sense. And he's reeling from getting his overnight screed failed by Keith. Dan's a bit older than me, and he's bigger than me, but I'm his boss. Oh! I bet she's got little feet. He just looks like it. After pointing out the flaws in contestant Dan's screed floor, foreman Keith goes to see his assistant foreman, also called Dan, to check for flaws in another contestant's screed floor. Dan grabs Keith. We had to get Dan and Keith to OK the screed before they could waterproof. Why is Dan there? We're, I'm confused. Is there another Dan? I don't know. Dan the contestant. Dan the... What is he called? Foreman. And Dan's yeah. just measured the finished floor level of where the screed is. He? Yes. Dan. Is the contestant. No! You've got to get the all clear from Keith and Dan. Oh, that's Dan. Which one's Keith? So today's D-Day for Dan. Keith and Dan confront Dan about the time Dan is taking to fix the floor Keith found in his floor. Now, the three men, two of whom are four men, argue whether the floor men can fix the floored floor before the lower floor needs to fix their ceiling, which both foremen, including Dan, point out is Dan's floor. Dan's going to ruin two other reveals. Why? Yeah, it's pretty full on at the moment. What's going on? Dan better... Is his name Dan? Oh, that, yeah. Yeah, the old bloke. He'd better get his ass into gear. Loved-up couple Julia and Sasha, meanwhile, are having troubles of their own. But they discover an issue with their puddle flange. Puddle flange. Puddle flange. Their flange. You've got to watch the flange. <laughs> That's an awful word. Just, it's a great it's the word. flange. The flange. That's the flange. If the puddle flange isn't waterproof properly... Just watch your flange. Look out. Mm, it's a bit it uneven does. there. You can get your hand in the flange. Yeah, it doesn't fit properly. It was just problem after problem. And the girls are worried about their flange. Can't you put some filler in it? In the flange? <laughs> yeah. There's no way we can finish. There's no way. Oh, father, tell me we get... Oh, lesbians, don't cry. Watch the music. <laughs> it's one of those <laughs> spirituals about dying and going to heaven because it's so serious with the flange. Audiences had to wait till Sunday to see whether the puddle flange and screed issues were resolved at the big bathroom reveal. Good evening, everybody. How are we? Good. Yeah. I cannot wait to see how the flange <laughs> turned out. Julia and Sasha. Wow. Wow. Love it. Looks impressive. Yeah, this is the business. Oh, the finer touches. Yeah, plants, a plant in there. Dan and Carlene. Scotty. He's Dan. Is that Dan? That's Dan. No, I, he... thought, he, I thought he was a tradie. Oh, my God. It's, it's nerve-wracking sitting and watching something with you sometimes. <laughs> well, it looks nice. That is so <laughs> ugly. No. It's very, very it's now. Good. It's nothing good. Darren said... I hate it. Oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on Darren's side. Shows what we bloody know about renovating. Oh. I'm not really an emotional bloke, but... No. Oh, wow. Oh, Dan. Poor Dan. The episode ends with the judges' scores being tallied on the blackboard by Scott Cam. All right, how are 
Hurry up, come on. Quick. Chill it, Sasha. Damn. Go the girls. <laughs> and it's heavy, it's it's heavy. Good. It sounds good. Dollar, sounds dollar good. bills, y'all. This is, this is the life around. Cold hard cash. Yeah. Gee, you're really on fire. We should definitely go on this show. Oh, definitely. We've got no tradie ability. No. Nah. We both get very cranky when tired and or hungry. Mm -hmm. We have completely different design styles. We're the whole package. On Wednesday night, Anastasia and her mum planned their weekly church visit. Why should I wear a skirt, mum? For respect, for the Jesus, for the church. You can't go like a man. Not Jesus to isn't going to give a shit whether I'm wearing a skirt oh, or pants. Come on. Who made up the rule that you can't wear pants in church? Who made up that rule? That's not God's rule. That's the stupid bullshit priest rule. One day I'm going to walk in with a mini skirt and a boob tube. <laughs> I'll fix them all right up. <laughs> And returning to our screens after a two-year break, bring me, bring me, bring me we enjoyed the much-loved Australian drama Offspring. I'll tell you what, the ladies love Offspring. Uh, I love Offspring. <gasps> it's not your normal, typical drama. Oh, oh God! <laughs> <laughs> the show centres around the lives of the family and friends of obstetrician Nina Proudman. Do you like Asha Kitty? She's very pretty. Yeah. What's wrong? Are you going to bash him? Nina, now a single mother and widow, was recently told a life-changing secret by her deceased partner's ex-wife. When we were married, Patrick had some of his sperm frozen. I thought it was only fair if I offer it to you so you can have another child if you wanted. What is going on? Nina had a husband who died. His name was Patrick. That is still, to this day, the most heartbreaking TV experience I've ever had. And his ex-wife said to her... Use Patrick's sperm and have your own children. So this show's going to be about sperm. Patrick. They're doing a ghost story I think now. it's a dream. She's imagining it. That's right, because yeah, she talks to herself a lot. Do you have, like, inner monologues like Nina does? Oh, yeah. It's cool. It's being spiritual. It's called wacky. What do you want me to do with them? It's up to you, I guess. Oh, easy for you, mate. You're dead. You don't have to get up and change the nappies. If you wanted to have another child, of course you'd do it. I'd love to have his sperm. I think you should get rid of it. No, Mum. You know he's dead. He's gone. No, he's not. The sperm's still living. Just pop it in the freezer. Yeah, Here's don't have the ice cubes from the freezer, kids. <laughs> <laughs> This is a fantasy family that could never happen, never. When I was asked to give sperm, they weren't going to let us look, even meet the kid. Yeah. Who wants to do that? Yeah, but there are absent fathers everywhere. He's not just absent, he hasn't gone down to the milk bar. How do they unfree sperm with Microwave. that line? <laughs> <laughs> to complicate matters, Nina is being pursued Nina. by yet another potential love Hello. interest. Harry. Hello. Harry's like a mix of us. My hair colour, your hair length. What are you doing here? Uh, I have a debrief to go to. He's a ranger. Did you realise he was a ranger? He's a hot ranger. Mm, he's a very hot ranger. I'll tell you now, they're going to get together, they're going to have sex, and then she's going to get pregnant that way. Do you like to grab some dinner sometime? Who is? Me. Wouldn't they just text each other or something? Yeah, no one does this in real life anymore. It's too risky face to face. I think we should probably just not. All right, I'll um, see you then. Hey, well, how would you go if you went out? What would you say to a woman? G'day, how are you? How about it? Do you remember what happened before you asked me out? You asked me, to, yeah, if I could get on lay -by. If I could put you on lay-by because I had a girlfriend at the time. <laughs> oh, it's unfair because men don't really like women like, like me. that, no. Because she's too much. But then she gets every single man she wants and doesn't want. I can't even hold down one man. <laughs> I, can't, I can't hold them down. I, I would potentially like to do that with you. So you're saying no, but I should possibly ask again. Yeah. This show just emphasises how crazy girls are. 
Is that how you process things upstairs? Guys blame it all on girls, but yeah. you just get your period without the period, just all the moods. You and you can't talk about your feelings, so it's like a guessing game constantly. Harry finally gets his date with Nina, and things are going very well. Do you think there are any other rooms in this giant hotel? <laughs> they're going to have sex, they're going to have sex, they're going to have sex. I told her, didn't I? Oh, Holly, <laughs> don't say that, please. That is orcs. Best first date. You'll get any ideas. Here's to Nina. Nina. She's not worrying about the other spoon. She's getting it now. She's getting a special delivery. <laughs> Are you embarrassed? <laughs> That's how people have sex, Mum. That's missionary. Another awkward show to watch with your parents. With the fear of falling pregnant, Nina slows things down. Can we just stop for a sec? OK, sure. Don't stop now. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> what do you want to talk about? <laughs> She's like UFC. Is she doing him now? I think she's strapped on and... Now, that's not missionary. Could you imagine that? Having to cuddle without getting sex? That's disgusting. I love this show. <laughs> I love watching it with you guys. Great show. Funny. It's a chick flick. Yeah? Mm. Too many hormones for you? Yesterday I was cooking and I saw like a bay leaf on the ground, so I took the bay leaf and crushed it to see I crushed a cockroach. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's disgusting. I'm never I'm never eating anything you cook again. Bear necessity. Over the past week, Channel 7 indulged our insatiable appetite for cooking shows with their newest offering, Zumbo's Just Desserts. Jeez, it's got a catchy intro. Zumbo's Desserts. Ooh, I wonder if I'm going to crave macarons. Oh, I bet the cakes. I wanted to see this. It's better be good Zumbos. because they've advertised this to the Hilton Hilt. on, on the Olympics. Looks like they've, like, revamped the MasterChef kitchen with colours. I like the set, Mum. I think it's nice and bright. Like colourful. Yeah. Welcome back, dessert lovers. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Rachel. Rachel Coos. She was on My Kitchen Rules. I love that show that she does, the one in Paris, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah in the kitchen of her house. Love at first bite, not just love at first sight. <laughs> <laughs> so who's Jumbo anyway? Yeah, but Zumbo, the, the cake bloke, the, the real good cake person. How did he become famous? He just made macarons. In this love-themed round, the contestants must produce a delicious dessert with a romantic inspiration. I'm creating a white chocolate panna cotta. This show is just exactly like The Great Australian Bake Off. They talk about what they want to do and they do an illustration of it. When I think of love, I think of my kids. Her so name's Kate and she's a no-nonsense mum. What the fuck is that even supposed to mean? Today I'm making a delicious, creamy... What is she, an eternal optimist? Is Eternal Optimus just code for unemployed? I think it might be code for unemployed. We're going to try and get nine elements on this plate. She's got an insurance broker. The other girl had Eternal Optimus. What the hell are all these people doing? My husband's looked after me through absolutely thick and thin, and now I'm getting emotional thinking about it. Um, oh, God, why do they always have to do these sub stories? I was born with type 1 diabetes. What? So... What sort of a diabetic comes onto a sweet cooking show? It's like... A Jim's mowing man having hay fever. At the end of round one, the contestants present their seductive desserts to the judges. Oh. Oh, my God, yum. Oh, oh soft. Mm. Mm. Yum. Oh. oh. I never really like these cakes they make because they're always kind of spongy. They're a bit tricky, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, how could those could... Oh, they look good, though. Petit gâteau means little cake in French. It looked textbook. Is this the Rachel cooking show? Sumbo hasn't said a bloody word. Sorry. It's Sumbo's desserts, isn't it? I think the dish today looked beautiful. Oh, look, he does speak. I loved it. That was delicious. He's as flat as a tack, isn't I know. he? You've done an amazing job. Patricia and Kate have produced the two lowest scoring dishes and must now reproduce one of Adriano Zumbo's crazy creations in order to stay in the competition. <gasps> What's that? 
I have no idea. The crock and bush. 100 profiteroles on this. 100? Profiletta, what are they called? For a Profiteroles. I've never made shoe pastry before. Then why are you on the show if you've never made shoe pastry before? Well, she isn't a diabetic. Patricia is feeling the pressure and begins to struggle. Where's your optimism now, bitch? She's been a bag of nerves the whole time, oh, this poor thing. Blood sugar levels are all over the place. With time running out, it's time for the all-important crock and bush construction. These hearts are really important. When I put it on, it's wonky. That's heaps wonky, girl. Oh, it's lopsided. Leading tower of profiteroles. What are they called again? Profiteroles. Profiteroles. Oh, my God. No. Oh, she's the carrier, too. Is it going to fall? It's going to fall. I need three hands. Uh, just hold, hold, the, hold the heart. Hold oh. the heart. Oh. <laughs> Zumbo, you asshole. Just walk over. <laughs> Come on. Oh. 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 oh! God. Oh, my God. I can't watch. <laughs> Oh, come and fall. Ooh. You can do this. Oh, oh, oh. oh She did it. <laughs> well, say Smash all away. that work for what? For them to break it. And now, one dessert lover will be sent home. Your dessert for me was like a holiday romance. Look at him, look at him just standing really there. Well. By the end of it, you see all the imperfections. Your custard had a great flavour. Please just Put smile. Do something else with your face. Amazing. You should be proud of yourself. Yeah. Just a kind of smile. I score you a five. No, no smile. Patricia, I score you a five. That gives you a total score of 10 out of 20. Well, oh, she's going home. Unfortunately, Patricia, it's time to depart the dessert factory. Oh, we smiled then. Maybe because it's the end of the show. <laughs> Diabetic losers. It's good that she's, like, just gone ahead and done what she wants to do with life, though. Yes, true. You shouldn't let anything stop you. No, she, and she hasn't. She's just a really shit cook. Well, I'm very disappointed with that show. Yeah. All the hype. I'd watch it again. I loved it. Well, so boring. Oh, what was not to like about it? For something that's for desserts and colourful, it should have been more more life. There's no... They're all dead. And especially with all the sugar that they've got there, they should be bouncing off the walls. On Wednesday, the Silburys discussed a late-life <laughs> career change for 86-year-old Emmy. Maybe there's a sex line for old people, though. I'm sure there is a sex line. <gasps> oh, people hello, have darling. fetishes for old grandmas. I could say, hello, darling. How are you tonight, dear? <laughs> are you managing all right? Are you managing all right? Do you need right? a bit of help? <laughs> This week, the ABC continued its new series, asking people questions about controversial topics. Why are you so fat? Why is are you so... What, what, what? Can you shower yourself? Is dwarf tossing OK? <laughs> is dwarf tossing OK? <laughs> what? Hey! You can't ask that. In this episode, polyamorists face up to queries about their lifestyle that people have been dying to ask. What is polyamory? <sighs> Polyamory comes from poly... Which is a Greek word, poly, meaning many. Amor, meaning love, polyamory. She didn't say Everybody it was a Greek word. Now. This is bullshit. Laura, it's my wife. And, uh, and John is her boyfriend. Oh, my oh. God. <laughs> what? Oh. oh. That's just fucking weird. I love this. Didn't quite get it. I thought he said, um, her husband and that's her boyfriend. That's what he said. <laughs> that's what he said. God. Is this something you only do behind closed doors? <laughs> well, we're on television. I was going to say. They would all be academics. Bet you. Bet you every one of these people is an academic. National television. Now your neighbours know you're a bunch of weirdos. How will we know if we're taking too long on a question? Because we can ramble um, sometimes. <laughs> they're all nerds. Yeah, I know. It's like they meet another nerd and they can't keep their pants on. They look like brother and sister. They do. Then you do you think you can only be polyamorous with someone that looks like you? Maybe. There's something about you that I find really attractive. Yeah. <laughs> I like your hair. Yeah. So I'm dating Elby, and then I'm also dating another person, guy. Wow. Um, and then Elby is also dating said guy. Oh my gosh. 
and also another girl. That's yeah. odd. Uh, and the guy that I'm dating is also dating that girl. Are you followed? But it's made up. It's not. <laughs> No, it's not made up. This is for real. Yeah. Yes. One partner's hard enough. How do you manage two? What do you think of this, Matt? Do you think you could have another wife? Yeah, that's your question. Or you, am I enough? You're more than enough. For example, Pete and I really love philosophical debates. Oh, God, they'd be boring at a dinner party, wouldn't they? And I have another lover. He and I have a kinesthetic connection. What the fuck does that mean? She is definitely an academic. Oh, it's, all, it's all about and touch. It is. What it connection is. have we got? They've got a kinesthetic, what do you call it? <laughs> We've got KY gel. <laughs> no, we have uh, My turn. Is every sexual experience an orgy? Yes. I was <laughs> waiting for that question. <laughs> yeah. Is every sexual experience an orgy? What a question. It's not orgy, it's orgy. Orgy, is it? <laughs> I'm not used to that word, no, but I know what it means. I'm glad you're not used to that word. Are you sure you know what it means? I do know what it means, Isabel. What does it mean? I'm not going to explain it. Come on. It's the pleasure you get out of having sex. No! no that's an orgasm. Oh, no. oh sorry. <laughs> the polyamorists were keen to dispel the myth that their lives are one big orgy. Do you know how, how hard it is to get everyone feeling sexual at the same time, feeling yeah. horny at the same time? <laughs> Go and take Viagra, you'll be fine. You can have walnuts. How do you, you know? Have... How are... no. do, but... Is that why there's walnuts <laughs> in your cupboard? <laughs> when the couple look at they got married, the old and that, yeah. they put sultanas in walnuts. Sultanas and walnuts, then. so they can have sex? Yeah. What else? We almost prefer sometimes just to have one on one. One on one, what? Uh, um, sex. Ah, uh, broad beans. Bro broad beans. I'm going to go and buy a kilo. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And if that's the sort of show you want to watch next week, you can watch it on your own. They're not going to talk about polyamorous next week, they'll talk about something else. Oh, well, maybe I'll give it another go. Yeah, it's bestiality next week. <laughs> Holly. Holly. What? Don't, you're so noisy. You you're going to make a speech or something, are you? It's like a nervous twitch. Oh. Don't do that. Oh, Holly, don't do that. Don't be silly. You're an animal, Holly. There's that little bit I had to get. With footy finals coming up, we got in some training with AFL reality show The Recruit. Footy. Yes! These are kids that want to be AFL footballers. The winner gets an AFL contract with a football club. So it's a bit like The Bachelor. The Bachelor of AFL. Woohoo! Dun, 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 dun. You don't give a shit, do you? This week's episode begins with the recruits getting their body fat measured. Skin folds are a good indication of how much fat you've actually got on you. There's when no you've been pinched with cold metal tweezers and someone going, oh. <laughs> Cheesecake for dessert, was it? Mm. How would your reading be? I reckon it'd be a world record reading. Yeah, not the right record. What's he got a bra on for? No, that's for when they put stuff on in that near when they run around, it shows all their heartbeat and um, how many like they ran. Looks like a trainee bra to me, Keith. Head coach, AFL legend Mick Malthouse is supervising. Make you think about your guts. <laughs> I like Mick Malthouse, he's a good man. Would you go Mick Malthouse, Mum? Absolutely not. That coach looks like a porn star called Dirty Harry or Old Harry. How do you know that? Um, he's just popped up from time to time. Good morning, recruits. Good morning. Good morning, mate. The recruits then face an obstacle course cheered on by a legendary Good former mate. player. The awesome Big Bad Barry Hall. He was a bad boy. He's good, but he was bad. You know what I mean? He was good at being bad. Get set! <laughs> oh, my God! Oh, it's bloody on. I love these challenges. What's this got to do with footy? Oh, do you like a muddy man? No, not particularly. Be too slippery. <laughs> Look like a uh, Where else do you get to see hot men waiting in mud? That's what the internet's for. Jaden takes out the challenge. Get up there. Play football. Just play football. Give them a football. 
while older contestant Justin comes in last. Oh, that'd be you, the short little guy at the end. Jaden's reward is to captain the team against the Sydney Swans Academy. Go on. Got it! Let's go, Swannies. Pick it up, mate. How long does this go for? The Swans Academy came out with a bit of fight. And oh, oh no. And, uh, Isn't it funny? Engrossing. It's just about a game of footy, but it's engrossing. You like it, Mill? It's OK. Hold. What did I last say I needed at the supermarket? At the half-time break, the recruits are trailing by 16 points. This is a bloodbath. Justin started off, you know, like a bull in a Chinese restaurant. A bull in a Chinese <laughs> restaurant. I think it's a bull in a China shop, darling. <laughs> Kicked a couple sausage rolls and showed us exactly what he can do. Yum, yum! That may come back. That may... Did we say we needed milk? We come out and played the... Cheese. The look, they're coming back now. Look, see? Look at the kick. Straight and open. Straight to a goal. Justin's six goals helped the recruits pull off a miraculous comeback. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> Big second half. But will it be enough to retain his spot? Oh, this is it. D-list. Who's going home? Daniel. Three contestants are up for elimination. What's, he, what's with the hair? It should get a part in a pantomime as bloody Goldilocks. It's like a fucker mop. Justin, please step forward. Oh. No! He kicked six goals as well. How would you feel? See, he's got nice hair. I'd let you stay. You're delisted. Can't be the full forward. You normally kick six on a, on a footy match, you're best on ground. He went really bad on the challenge. Who cares? There's no obstacle courses in AFL footy. Justin. Oh! <laughs> It's too emotional, man. It's too hectic, this show. Have no respect for people that cry. Why? His dreams have been shattered. My dreams have been shattered lots, and you don't see me crying. Oh, since when have your dreams been shattered? When I woke up this morning and rolled over and looked at you. <laughs> next time. I need three more weeks, Lee. I'm go. not watching it next week. Come I don't on. care. No. It is just a fantastic show, isn't it? Even if you don't like footy, you must like this show. What you doing? I'm coming. Hey? I'm coming. <laughs> Shut up. Shh, four Corners is on now. This will be good. On Monday, Four Corners shone some light on the Middle Eastern refugee crisis. You know what's stupid about this? It's not actually Four Corners, that's Four Sides. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a terrible start, though. In this special episode, we follow a family's struggle to survive in war-torn Syria. Look, look at all from the wall, look at all the smoke. Isn't it terrible when war is just part of your everyday living? <gasps> oh. You've got our kids here that are playing outside in the gardens and everything like that. You've got kids there playing in war zones. Imagine if we were in that. That's it. Yeah. My mum's house was bombed. There was a lot of shelling and stuff going on. Yeah. So they used to just have to shove their face into all the swamps and stuff to protect themselves. And she's still got marks on her arms of all the... No kid should have to go through that. Oh. The fear. Mm. Jesus. A kid that young should not know the difference between a missile and a projectile no. shot from a tank and whether or not it explodes or not. They're just used to it, immune to it, aren't they? They'd be used to seeing wounded and death. They see it all the time. With the danger outside, the children spend most of their time inside. What the hell? 
They're playing. Oh my god. So instead of doing like cops and robbers, they're doing ISIS. Yeah. That's what kids do, they play act things. So you know like cowboys and Indians? Mm. This is no way to live. What are they doing there though? Why are they still in that city? Baladna. Damarit. If you lived in this place here, how much do you just want to go anywhere? You don't mm. care where you go, anywhere that you're safe. With the children's father missing in the war against ISIS, mum, Hala, takes the decision to escape Syria with her children. They head for neighbouring Turkey. They'll never see their dad again. No. Nah. Then you got to try and leave to stay alive. You can see why people desperately throw their kids onto a boat to try and get mm. them away, can't you? We are happy. See, she's strong, the mother, isn't she? Such a brave decision to leave your country for yeah. the betterment of your children. Yep. After three years of waiting, they are finally granted asylum in Germany, where a home awaits them in the city of Goslar. Oh, that's where you see your house. Elderly residents need the youngsters. Too many oldies kicking the bucket. So that's pretty good. <laughs> I just fill their spot. Oh, so they're actively taking them in. Mm. They're going to pay them to go there. Yeah, it's certainly a very generous uh, gesture. Mm, yeah. yeah, exactly. But I mean, with that as well, you've got to bring the industry too. You mm. can't just like plonk people there. Yeah, it's true. You've got to bring like the the jobs with it, and that's the really difficult part. This is their new school. I love the school more and more and more. Wow, see them, they look so happy. They seem to have fit it in very sort of quickly, don't they? He's got a mate already. How good's that? So good. Everyone very welcoming. Can't see it happening in Australia. Mm -mm. We've got plenty of little country towns yep. in Australia where they'd be welcome, I yep. reckon. Just say we had a family of Muslims mo move to some little hick town here, they'd be hammered. See, it's important to, for people to see this side, isn't it? Everyone should be made to watch that, not just the people who want to watch the ABC. <clears throat> Pauline Hanson like should watch Pauline this. Pauline Hanson, yeah. Oh, dear. Tough? Yeah. I just wish I could help. What do we... Uh, what do you do? Is Germany a wealthy country? Mm. Yeah. What is wealthy is Australia? Yep. So they can offer them all that, and we just offer them a concentration camp. Yep. Yeah. 